Green's earned his PhD from the University of Texas at Austin and recently served as a Radcliffe Fellow at Harvard. He was awarded a 2015 winning award, two Pushcart Prizes, a Hodder Fellowship from Princeton University, and a 2013 National Endowment for the Arts Literature Fellowship, and in 2008 was the Lake Fellowship. His second book of poems, Best Barbarian, was recently released by Norton in 2022. I am also happy to tell you the very good news that Gray Wolf will be publishing a collection of essays from him this August on the historical and contemporary violence of America. Silence and art as vital places of refuge and liberation through solidarity. I could not be happier to have Roger Reeves on this campus. Please join me in a very warm welcome. Rat Among the Pines. Tear tonight is the moon slipping from a rat's gray grass, finding its way back into the sky, which is America, a white moon leaning on the night's neck with its hands in its pocket, moon hung calm above catastrophe, the police breaking the neck of a man who had just brushed summer's first bead of rain from his eye lashes, who knocking a Newport against a wrist, watching smoke break its head against a brick wall, is preparing to die, unaware they are preparing to die. Heavy the moon, silly the tasking of a rat with delaying death. Terra tonight is the candor of the earth, where someone is preparing to die, and the earth receives that dying with its hands in its pockets. And the moon that once burnt the silk hump of a rat back in the sky, and my daughter hiding in the rose bushes asking who, who the sirens have come to kill, and someone calling it beautiful, summer, moon, and someone dying beneath that beauty, which is America. <coughs> um, I want to say uh, thank y'all wow. for having me. Charlotte in that cold cornfield. <laughs> it was so cold, y'all. There was no shoe that you could have on for which your foot didn't feel like a block of ice. And she was so warm and so welcome. And I remember the dinner that we had afterwards. Um, and you were bright. You were so bright despite the cold. Um, and so I'm, I'm really appreciative uh, of that relationship and that I'm here with y'all. You know, and, uh, and this is also kind of special for me uh, because Mobile, like, people don't know this, but uh, my father's side of the family is from Alabama, uh, from a little small town called Eufaula. Y'all know where Eufaula is? It's about an hour north of here, right? And so the last time I was here, I had driven down from Chicago because on my first Father's Day, I got a call that said, your dad has only about eight weeks to live. And he was down here at a hospital because uh, he had a very rare form of cancer. He was receiving uh, cancer treatment, so I drove 17 hours uh, with my daughter and my partner, and we came down. Um, and so the last time I was here was less, you know, it was heavy. Uh, last time I was in Alabama. Uh, so, but it's nice to be back with you. Um, and so I feel like this is kind of a family reunion of sorts. We've probably got family in this audience somewhere. <laughs> so it's probably related to me up here. Uh, so, it's great to be here. Uh, I like to give a little instruction for readings, which is don't try to make sense of it now. Just enjoy the sound of things. Just like, think of it like music. Like we don't go into like listening to like Miles Davis, like I gotta understand why he played that E flat that way. We just enjoy the E flat, right? We just enjoy the music. So, I, so let's just like be here and be joyous together and enjoy some of this music. Um, 
I'm, it, it, as I read, this is only my second book, uh, so I'm trying new ways of reading uh, or new ways of thinking about organizing readings uh, and also have given myself the task that I must read a poem from the book that I've never read at other readings. Mm -hmm. Um, partly because I think what winds up happening is you get to like your greatest hits, yeah. right? And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, that's cool too, but that's not honoring all the work. And you want to honor the work. And part of honoring the work is putting it in the world. Uh, so this next poem, uh, even though my family's from Alabama, I was raised uh, right outside Philadelphia in this little small town called Mount Holly, New Jersey, um, in Burlington County, uh, full of malls. Just like <laughs> And so this is called American Landscaping, Philadelphia to Mount Vernon. Who would have thought too much simultaneity? The swan planters hovering above the wind-beaten statue of the Virgin Mary that cast her gaze down on the repainted lawn jockey, his brown face spreading out over his white cap, a small rebellion or merely an inarticulate hand overzealous in restoring race back to its place in God after winter makes heathen the heaven of horticulture. This is America calling, the golden pollen of spring blinging every <coughs> available sedan, stone porch puddle, and satin blouse hanging from a smiling white line into yellow salvation or forgetfulness a black dog antique in its hunger for my daughter's hand through a fence. My daughter and her machine in wonder willing to give. It is as if every moment is praying for whatever is above it or just outside its grasp. The dog for a hand. The lawn jockey holding his absent lantern out in front of him for the virgin whose eyes no longer there, January away by the blizzards, salt and wind, stutter with a brown streak, I won't call bird shit, but rusted water dripping from the corrugated roof above. Even the flies in the earliest part of the sentence twitch above the sidewalk as if being accused of neglect, infanticide, murder, ending the empire in order to start another in their own image. But what is an empire fashioned in the image of flies? Mistake. It's not a lantern the jockey holds out in front of him, but a black hitching ring for masters to tether the tame because they lack mastering. Though not the jockey who stands on the wind in paving stones like Jocko Graves, the slave of General Washington, who froze to death and folded in snow on the banks of the Delaware River his lantern out in front of him awaiting his master's return as he had been ordered. And Washington, so moved by Graves' frozen obedience, constructs a statue of dead Graves holding a lamp at his plantation home in Mount Vernon. Even in death, a slave must labor, though I knew nothing of these clothes when on a Ferris wheel overlooking the muddy syringed and bottled banks of Philadelphia, I kissed a girl through the tin smog and chemical plant perfume and carried that kiss through the year, touching newspaper, edges of blankets, the backs of hamburger buns to my lips to remember the dimming summer sheepishly backing out of the door it hurriedly burst through. Only in America will the sons and daughters of slaves kiss the sons and daughters of their masters and remember it as an opportunity to be human. Uh, I had the good fortune of um, getting to hear James Baldwin sing uh, on a recording uh, he recorded an album. Most people don't know that James Baldwin like sung and recorded an album. I'd like to spread this. You should go. You can look it up on YouTube. Uh, and he sang a song that I grew up singing and hearing sung in the Pentecostal church I grew up in, uh, Precious Lord. And I remember like hearing this because it was found in some archival footage at the Schomburg uh, in New York. And I remember hearing it 
And there was something else that for the first time I heard James Baldwin's voice, which was weariness and tired. And sort of, there was a vulnerability. And I was like, oh, I have to write about it. So I tried, um, but it took me years before I was able to really get the poem. So this poem is called Grendel. Um, and the reason it's called Grendel is because it also refers to who I think is probably the first black man in literature, Grendel. <laughs> um, if you look at the way he's described, he's othered, he's marginalized, he has this insatiable hunger. And um, I have this theory that actually it probably was, Grendel and his mother were probably Africans that had migrated to Scandinavia. And so Grendel is one of these, like, Beowulf is this old text. I might be talking about the text. Beowulf is this old text y'all might have heard of where, like, it's our first, like, hero myth, right? Um, where, you know, Beowulf slays Grendel, who's been terrorizing the meat house. Um, but I, I wonder sometimes how we tell stories if that's really what was happening. Right? Like, it seemed like if, if there's, like, and, and they also talk about his strength in this way that, like, Grendel is this superhumanly, super, super strength sort of being. Um, but I begin to think about Grendel and James Baldwin sort of together in this poem. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grendel. All lions must lean into something other than a roar. James Baldwin, for instance, singing Precious Lord. His voice is weary as water, broken over his scalp. In a storefront, sanctified church's baptismal pool all those years ago when he wanted to be somebody's child and on fire in that being. Lord, I want to be somebody's child in chosen water spilling over their scalp, water taking the shape of their longing. A deer diving into evening traffic and the fur drawn in the air over the hood of the car power and wanting to be something alive and open. Lord, I want to be alive and open, a glimpse of power, the shuffle of a mother's hand over a sleeping child's forehead as if clearing the city's rust from its face, which we mostly are, a halo of rust, a glimpse of power, James Baldwin leaning into the word light. His voice jostling that single grain in his throat as if he might drop it or <coughs> already has. I'm calling to that grain of light, to that gap between his teeth where the many of us fatherless sleep and bear and be whatever darkness or leaping thing we can be. In James Baldwin's mouth, my difficult beauty, my weak and worn, my future as any number of angels, which is not unlike the beast, Grendel, coming out of the wild heaven into the hills and halls of the meat house at the harvest call, with absolute prophecy in his breast, and a desire for mercy, for a friend, an end to drifting in loneliness, and in that coming down out of the hills, out of the trees for once, bringing humans the best vision of themselves, which of course must be slaughtered. Um, so, you know, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s, which means I love hip hop. Even though I wasn't allowed to, you know, I grew up in Pentecostal church. It was you weren't allowed, you weren't supposed to be listening to it, you know. I would sneak out and, you know, this is back when you'd buy a cassette tape. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what a cassette tape is. Uh, I would buy a cassette tape. And I remember my first tape that I bought was, uh, this is terrible, y'all. I remember, like, oh man. Uh, it was like Snoop Dogg's uh, What's My Name. It was like, you know, like, it was. You know, and that was like gangster rap at the time, so everybody was like, oh my God. I bought it off a of friend, she bought it for me at the mall, I gave her the money, because you know, I had to, my mom couldn't see the transaction. <laughs> <laughs> but I say all that to say, I'm saying that because I think for me, you know, like there's a lot of musical influences. Um, and one is, I've always been interested in hip hop, and, and particularly as a type of um, aesthetic that can be 
deployed in poetry, but not deployed in the way that we think of it, like the rhyme, yes, but more of like what, you know, how hip hop does persona, right? Which is swagger, right? Um, how hip hop is thinking about referentiality, right? Hip hop's really elusive, right? Like it'll be all types of things, like it was it 54, DMX is a line where he says, I like a girl with 54, seven, 54 11 size seven and girls. Right, 5411s is what is what Reebok cost after you put New York tax on it. Right, <laughs> so that's a huge illusion, right? But only cats in New York would know, like, oh, that's we're talking about a certain type of Reebok that was forty nine ninety nine and now the tax, right? So it's like, but it really if this right, 5411 54 size seven and girls, right? But it, it you like that, right? So I've always was like, oh, I want to do that, right? I want to play in that elusiveness, right, with all the different ways that play can happen. So I, the reason I do, I always set this poem up because there's a lot of illusions. Um, you don't have to like know them to get, to get the poem, but I, I like to give certain ones to y'all. Uh, so Jack Johnson, Jack Johnson, famous boxer, was once, you know, he was famous, infamous, for uh, dating, marrying white women at a time when this was illegal. He was arrested for this in Arizona, in fact. I think his record has just been expunged in Arizona for this fact. Um, that, this is gonna be sound weird, but that was like Senator John McCain's last mm -hmm. like thing that he wanted to make sure happened before he died. But Jack Johnson was asked uh, by a journalist, "Why do white women love black men so much?" His answer, which I think is really awesome, because it's a non-answer, was because we eat cold eels and think distant thoughts. <laughs> that was like that is the greatest answer of all time, <laughs> right? Like. I just think we should use that. Anytime someone asks you a question you don't want to answer, just say, why do you do Because I eat cold eels and think this. <laughs> um, the other is, um, let's see, what are the other? Uh, Y'all know No Church in the Wild by Kanye. Um, and, oh, St Steph Curry's birth name is not, St we know it's Wardell, right? That his name Wardell Stephon Curry, okay. Because I like to call him Wardell, because I just think that's a strange name. Right? Uh, so that's it. We'll keep going now. Future from Beyond the Oh, also, Future is the, the rapper is cited in here. Because um, I like Future. You know, I, I think Future is, as, as, as Andre 3000 would say, it's the most negative, positive music you'll ever hear. You know I mean? Future from Beyond the Voice of God. What shall be done with the demand for more selfies? Selfies of the crow in the wheat in the wheat knocking against the window. Selfies of my daughter hooting like an owl and beating the back of her cage, the back of her bones. Selfies of Wittgenstein's eyes settling on the back of a crow, which is the shadow of a boy delivering milk to the door of his mother, where language began, begins, Gertrude Stein over the Stambergasi eating salt fish and comforters with Ame Césaire, more selfies of Negroes from Niger and New Orleans, blue black in the blue black buck and cancer of summer, and Yves Saint Laurent glasses, and pinafores of light pinned to the eyes. No church in the wild, but more selfies of Susie Asada buck dancing on balustrades near the nigger cemeteries, where the chariot swung so low, we just call them commas. We about to fuck up some commas, yeah. Gerrymander and Jack Johnson and shit out of shit. Why do white women love black men? Because we eat cold eels and think distant thoughts. Jack Johnson, we need more selfies. Selfies of Frederick Douglass's pen removed from the gashes in his feet and writing hot checks for Rolexes and rivers our bodies just can't cash. Wade in the water, Wade in the water, children. We about to fuck up some trauma, yeah. Selfie and holler, yeah. Instagram at the ashram with Lil Weezy and Wardell Curry Jr., not senior, busting three-pointers, yeah, on behalf of a local charity that sends mosquito nets to children in Africa, the Sudan, Niger, I don't know, tiger, tiger burning bright, tiger, tiger hanging from the street light. Distant thought, I'm so in time, I'm out of time, so selfie, I'm healthy. I mean, I'm saying though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I grew up in the Pentecostal church, so I'll be in here long with y'all, you know what I mean? I don't want to be in here long. I got to read a love poem, uh, partly because, I'm, I, you know, like, I think love poems are hard. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm growing up in America and writing love poems are hard, I should say. Um, and so my partner, she gave me this challenge. She was like, you don't write, you don't write me love poems. I'm like, nah, I do. There's love. Like, if I, there's love. <laughs> and so this was my attempt at writing a love poem. Um, and it starts out with this, like, originally I thought it was going to actually be an essay. Um, and then I was like, oh, no, let's play with the essay as a type of, like, form, right? Like, what if, the, what if the, you know, which is, I can tell you, it goes back to, like, Alexander Pope and, like, things like that. But, like, you can play with the essay as a form of getting into a poem. So, uh, yeah. Into the West. It would seem clear that no one can call upon thee without knowing thee. Though Augustine writes of God here, notorious for his absence, he could also be speaking of desire, pleasure, the tick of snow against the dry leaves, which sends my daughter spinning on her heel, the sound of it, that, daddy, that. Sometimes the world, its luring joy, is just a that. An absence that calls, demonstrates its over thereness, its being <coughs> without a proper name. So a silence sounded, as when I entered the clearing I once begged for, you, at an instant, absolute and looking back at me, as if witnessing a calendar or road you've already passed through. So my face now, and whatever wolf, vulture, or golden horn of pleasure, a that, a ticking of snow against the wet road, nameless, thee, where you've been and left the body of that being, so I, so I hurry and press into your leaving like a leaf, scuttling after the dream of itself, into the sharp wet of the snow against the skin, on into the west, where desire and sometimes pleasure is a type of faith. What you call me to in this spilling, this motion of night, your hair loose in the water of your back, your spine has become the eye you wish for me to see through. But I must close my two good eyes, which is the beginning of any apocalypse or rapture, our daughter or the day, us touching the north and south of each other without compass or rose, this stumbling a type of faith too, a seeing, but without the dependence on sight or some heavenly ruin, a signal of an end. It was like the deer outside, gathering at the window, licking the cold glass to smoke. Uh, I think because I had a daughter, I was thinking about children quite a bit um, in this collection. And something that a friend of mine, or not a friend, knew a person that was I was kind of acquainted. Was like, you know, they're having been, and I thought this was strange, I was like, this can't be true. There haven't been that many, there haven't been any books of poems by black men written about their children. And I thought, that couldn't be. And then when I went back, but it's true, there's very few poems by men about children um, and raising children, but I'm like, how's that possible? I'm like, clearly, men aren't raising children. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, men aren't raising children. <laughs> uh, so this book is, it, it's often thinking about my daughter and children in general. So the last poem is called Children Listen. It turns out, however, I was deeply mistaken about the end of the world. The body in flames will not be the body in flames, but just a house fire ignored. The black sails of that solitary burning boat rubbing along the legs of lovers. <coughs> the lovers, excuse, flung, excuse me, let me go back. The black sails of that solitary burning boat rubbing along the legs of lovers flung into a Roman sky by a carousel. The lovers, too sick in their love to notice a man drenched in fire on a porch or a child aflame mistaken for a dog, mistaken for a child, running to tell of a bomb that did not knock before it entered in Gaza with its glad tidings of abundant joy. In Kazmiris, a god is weeping in a window, one golden hand raised above his head 
as if he slipped on the slick rag of the future. Our human kindnesses, unremarkable as the flies rubbing their legs together while standing on a slice of cantaloupe. Children, you were never meant to be human. You must be the grass. You must grow wildly over the graves. Thank you. <laughs>